As we've heard in the interviews, we all are different because of personal characteristics such as age, gender, ability, ethnicity, physical features, our skin color, height, weight, state of health, attitudes, intelligences, thoughts, personalities, as well as whether we are introverted or extroverted. We also are different because of social characteristics, such as our places of residence, income, habits, religion, families, hobbies, experiences and education, which all have an impact on who we are. The concept of diversity encompasses acceptance of and respect for all our differences. It means uh, understanding that each individual is unique and recognizing our individual differences. It is about understanding each other and moving beyond simple tolerance to embracing and celebrating the rich dimensions of diversity that make up each individual. Because of cultural and social pressures, generations of left-handed children were encouraged or even forced to write and perform other activities with their right hands. Forced right-handers had to work a lot harder to improve in writing. They were unable to perform at sports as well as natural right-handers, got tired easily and could even have had language difficulties. The problem was solved when society accepted that 10% of people are left-handed. Teachers stopped working to convert lefties to righties at an early age. Well, you know that Leonardo da Vinci was left-handed and everyone recognizes his greatness. In this module, we will focus on gender and sexuality. Biological sex, gender identity and sexual orientation are fundamental parts of who we are. Is it going to be a boy or a girl? This is the question we always ask future parents. When a child is born, a quick glance between the legs determines the gender label that the child will carry for life. Gender beliefs usually only allow for the existence of two sexes. Boys and girls are invited to become real men and real women according to respective cultural models. A present for a girl, a small iron. A present for a boy, a construction set. What if a nine-year-old boy were interested in ironing and what if a nine-year-old girl were interested in playing with a construction set? The binary concept of men and women still fails to capture the rich variation that exists in our human experience. Biological sex refers to the objectively verifiable organs, hormones and chromosomes we possess. Being female means having a vagina, ovaries to X chromosomes and predominant estrogen. Being male means having testes, a penis, an X and Y chromosome configuration and a predominant testosterone. Seems clear, doesn't it? But did you know that up to 1.7% of people are intersex? that is, born with physical sex characteristics that lie between those of typical males and typical females? Older terms include the word hermaphrodite to describe these people. For example, someone can be born with the appearance of being male, having a penis, a scrotum, etc., but also have a functional female reproductive system. These intersex infants and children can be surgically or hormonally altered to create more socially acceptable physical sex characteristics, but such interventions have been criticized by the World Health Organization. In April 2015, Malta became the first country to end medical interventions to modify the sex anatomy of intersex children. Gender identity is different from one's biological sex. Let me repeat that because it's crucial. Gender identity is different from one's biological sex. Gender identity describes the gender with which 
we identify who we think and feel we are. Male people who think and feel they are men or female people who think and feel they are women are called cheese gender, that is to say, when the physical characteristics meet stereotypical social expectations. When a biological male thinks and feels she's a woman or a biological female thinks and feels he's a man, we call them transgender. Just imagine being trapped in a life you don't want, a fate you can't change, being a woman in a man's body or being a man in a woman's body. In order to be themselves, transgender people may change their names, pronouns or style of dress to transition or change from the biological gender they had at birth to their perceived gender. Some transgender people also choose a medical transition with the help of medical specialists who will prescribe hormones and or surgery. Sexual orientation defines who you are attracted to. Heterosexual people are romantically and sexually attracted to people of the opposite sex. Homosexual people are attracted to people of the same sex. And in the middle, we have people who are bisexual, who are attracted to people of both sexes. Do not assume sexual orientation by observing the ways people act, dress or behave. Masculine boys can be homosexuals and effeminate boys can be heterosexuals and the same goes for girls. In 1992, the World Health Organization removed homosexuality from the list of mental disorders, but in lots of cultural contexts, it's still difficult to accept that some people can naturally have a romantic and sexual relationship with people of their own sex, just as some people can naturally write using their left hand. Mm -hmm.